Good Sunday morning. My name is Jaden Jefferson and welcome to the, this week's Community Focus. I'm joined by Alfonso Narvarez, a local activist who has been very vocal about the current gun violence surge that we're seeing here in the city of Toledo. And he's joining me this morning to talk about his efforts and the efforts of his community. Good morning. Good morning. So would you first be able to give me an idea of what you've seen as a community activist and some of your ideas for why this surge in gun violence is happening in the first place? So I think there's a variety of factors that why we're having this increase of violence. Um, when you look at demographics, I think part of it is economic, lack of economic development, um, lack of resources in those neighborhoods. Um, when we think of long-term, like adequate healthcare, adequate housing, um, adequate uh, education, lack of job growth. So I think that's part of it. Um, I'm not going to deny the fact that there is probably gang violence in our community. Um, I think that that's part of it, but I think there's the other part of long-term resources for our community. I think people are uh, just lacking those needs. As I mentioned at the start of the show, you are a voice in this fight against gun violence and advocating to get more of those resources deployed to the neighborhoods, the communities that need them the most. So, you know, seeing all of this happen, I know I'm, I'm sure there's people that are out there that want to help, want to get involved. So what is your recommendations for them so that they can get involved and help to contribute to the solution? So I recommend people getting involved in their uh, community by uh, connecting with the block watches, Connecting with community groups, um, just being a voice in the community is really a helpful thing. Um, I know that, so for us, the One Village Council, um, our mission has been really to engage residents, get them involved by uh, getting them involved in cleanups, community meetings, stuff like that, just so they're aware of the happenings going on in their neighborhoods. Um, you know, I, I know people are fearful of joining the community groups or block watches because they are. They don't want to be known as snitches in the neighborhood, but it's not like that. It's being active in the neighborhood, knowing what's going on, and being part of the, of the solution. Um, one of the things that we have talked about in the past is either you're part of the problem or you're part of the solution. And uh, I think with everything going on in today's world, I, I think we need more people who are part of the solution, uh, being active in their neighborhood. And it's not just you know coming to a community meeting or whatever. It's you know watching out for each other uh, in terms of little things like neighbors. You know, if you see something suspicious in your neighborhood, call it out. Call the non neighbors. You know, call nine one one. Reach out to your fellow neighbors. See what's going on. So I, I think it's just being active like that can lead to better things and bigger things. This issue has been, of course, frustrating, but more than anything, challenging because there isn't just one solution to address gun violence. And if that was the case, we wouldn't be dealing with this right now. So what would you say have been the top challenges when it comes to addressing gun violence in Toledo in particular? So I think one of the challenges is when you look at the demographics of the crime that has happened, it involves our youth. Um, a lot of the situations, uh, it's, it's, uh, to me, they're kids, they're under 25 years old. So I think one of the challenges is reaching out to our youth. Um, I can see the pushback. Um, even in today's, even in my neighborhood, I see our youth pushing back about some of the things that we're doing in our community, you know, such as the cleanups, and, uh, interacting with residents. So I think that's probably the biggest challenge that we are facing in our, in our community is trying to reach out to our youth. Um, and letting them know that there are better things to do than just to, just to argue with each other or whatever. Um, some of the other challenges I think for long term is a lot of these crimes are happening in, happening in the uh, inner city neighborhoods. So uh, economic development, housing development, um, again, adequate housing. I think those are some of the challenges that we are facing as a city that we really need to work on to really make a make a dent in the crime in our community. Uh, but you know, I, I I try not to play into the narrative that you know our city is, is this and that. I think I think our our city is great. I love our city. Um, but um, I think you know with social media and media in general, uh, I think you know we have to change the perception. 
that just because a murder happens uh, doesn't make our city a bad neighborhood. So I think that's for us challenge. Um, but you know, we have to think long term in terms of solutions for these challenges. And uh, one of the phrases I like to use is, uh, "We are not going to police ourselves out of poverty." And I think when you look at a lot of the crime that is happening in our community, there it, it, it involves low income. So we, we just are not going to please ourselves out of the situation if we continue to, to not be active in our community. You made a great point when talking about that. A lot of this does happen uh, to kids that are very young. These are kids that are dying on our streets. Even a seven-month-old was shot and killed as a result of all of this. So, And you also made another great point when talking about that you can't police your way out of a situation that we're in right now because the more and more officers that are being deployed isn't exactly going to be the thing that solves this problem. But would you say there has been a great enough partnership between the community and the Toledo Police Department when it comes to getting this done? Because it really is also a game of collaboration. Yeah, so I, um, I think there's been a, a great partnership between the city of Toledo, TPD, and the residents of this community. Um, so for those who know me, uh, I'm a history buff. I, I love learning history. So um, back in 91, uh, Toledo was on the forefront with a group called the Citizens Review Committee that, that uh, you know, put citizens on a board and they got to review actions of police officers. So this was before some of the stuff that happened across this country. And so Toledo was on the forefront of that. And I think when we look at it now, we're still doing those things to be innovative. Uh, the number of community good service officers that are on the street from the neighborhood, I think that's a very innovative thing for our community. The officers know the beat, they know the neighborhood, they know the criminals, they know the good people, um, they know the businesses. So it has been a very innovative, I think it's been a very innovative city in terms of policing and community policing and neighborhood togetherness or neighborhood partnerships. So, um, you know, I, I, there's, still, there's still stuff that needs to be done. I personally would like to see more community service officers. I think there's like eight or nine right now. I would like to see that number double um, just so we can have more interaction with neighborhoods. Um, but again, I Uh, again, we are not going to place ourselves out of the situation. Um, by, you know, I think the, the programs that we have implemented, like LASER and some of the other um, hard-hitting programs getting the, the worst of the worst off the street, I think they're great. But again, I think we need long-term planning, making sure that there's a quality of life plan for these neighborhoods, um, making sure that the community service officers are consistently working with businesses, consistently working with our youth in those neighborhoods. So. Uh, yeah, I, again, I think we, city, TV, and presents, I think there's a great partnership there. Just need to continue to expand on that. Well, it's definitely going to be a long fight and not something that we're going to see an end to um, for what it looks like anytime soon. So it's definitely going to be something that we're all going to have to pay attention to, follow closely, and do our part because this is definitely a, uh, this is all of us that are being impacted by this and all of us have a role in ensuring that next generation uh, doesn't have to continue down this path that we're going on right now here in the city of Toledo. Alfonso, thank you so much for joining me this morning. Thank you for having me on. I, it's been an honor and privilege, so I, I appreciate your time. Thank you. You have a great day. You too.